What if everything you have deemed as impossible really was possible? What have you known and believed was possible your whole life? You just didn't know how to actualize it. Come and discover a world of infinite possibilities on Outside the Impossible with Venus Castleberg. On this show, we will share pragmatic tools to create the life and living you truly desire. And now, your host, Venus Castleberg. Hello and welcome, everyone. Um, <laughs> it's so funny to have like like technical difficulties, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so excited to have you guys all here, and so excited to have Julie here. Um, Julie Tutton, to me, um, I'm gonna do her uh, introduction here in a second, but I just want to kind of talk about like when I m first met Julie. Um, she just exuded this this radiance, this beauty, this um, potency, even, um, which is funny because of the name of our show today. And um, when I when I was first around here, there was just like it it almost. You, you ever been around those people that like like it makes you want to like sit up a little straighter <laughs> and 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 be a little nicer and be a little. Um, uh, a little more appreciative of beauty in general. And um, so when, when I first met her, she, she radiates this beauty and we'll talk about it, I'm sure, in, in a few minutes or probably more towards the end of the show, she also makes this amazing, beautiful jewelry that I can't wait to ask her about because there's beauty all around Julie and um, not just in who she is, but also in, in what she has to offer. Um, so she's Julie is an artist, a jeweler, an energy healer, author, and a mom. She's also a certified facilitator of access consciousness for the last 15 years. She has razor sharp awareness that allows her to cut through the core of your issues with kindness and caring. She has always desired to inspire and power and empower people to be happy, and she loves to create beauty in the world, um, which just it, <laughs> it um, confirms everything that I just felt around her. Um, so anyway, without further ado, Julie Tutton, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you, Venus. <laughs> That's, it's so interesting to hear um, somebody talk about me in a way that like, I don't, I have no idea that people see that, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I, guess I am doing what I came here to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. There's the epiphany of the day. That's awesome. Um, so if anybody out there actually over the um, course of today has any questions for um, Julie or I, you're f please feel free to call in to 202-570-7057. And today we're here to talk about the potency of beauty. And um, Julie, I really just wanted to know, what does that mean to you? Well, it's interesting because um, when you sent me the email saying, what do you want to talk about? I, I was like, wow, what do I want to talk about? I want to know what you want to talk about. <laughs> and <laughs> as I was pondering that question, what popped in was the potency of beauty. And I thought, ooh. What's that? And it's like, when you think about what's beautiful to you, it's usually something you put outside yourself and mm. you, you know, tend to separate from and like don't include yourself in. And I, I was really looking at how when you start to step into and acknowledge what you be, you become the potency of the thing that you actually admired or put outside yourself. Mm. So, wow, that's... <laughs> yeah, so like if we didn't judge beauty and separate from it, what beauty are we? And like how does that express in the world? Beautifully put. And is and would you say also, like, I've heard this said in, in different circles, like, you, you also can't really see it in someone else if it doesn't already exist in you. 
So there's also this rec rec recognition, and it's I'm not just I'm definitely not just talking about physical beauty or, um, I mean I know, it it doesn't really even matter what you look like. You know you can have this this radiance about you, regardless of what you look like by who you're being, and um, yeah, totally. Uh, there's yeah. Um, there's definitely an inner beauty and an outer beauty, and I. I guess I've been looking at it like the beauty of the being and also the beauty of the external and how you choose to create that. And it's like being energetically congruent with your words. If you're a really beautiful being but you don't take care of your body, that's not really being energetically congruent. And the same as if you're only focusing on the external and your appearance and your internal isn't being beautiful it's not being kind it's you know a lot of judgment and criticism and stuff towards self mm. it's not going to be energetically congruent either right oh, wow good point <laughs> um and so how would you say i mean thanks for saying that and how would you say like what would be a tool or maybe even a practice or something that we could tell our listeners like how, like somebody sitting there going okay I can tell I'm in, I'm incongruent with myself like everybody says that I look beautiful and I can't receive that I can't perceive that I just judge myself like um, or the opposite is true you know like um, how would do you recommend or what would you say to somebody about like how do you get congruent with yourself how do you get those pieces to come together yeah that's a good question I'm sure there's going to be a lot of variety for like wherever you're coming from whatever your point of view is but um, first would be to lower your barriers to yourself and ask like what is your point of view of you and the way you appear in the world and the way you're being in the world like mm -hmm. look at both of those and you can use the processing you know to pock and pod yourself or you can just choose to be different whatever's easier for you you know right um cool so w would you also maybe take a minute to just explain because i'm not sure everybody knows like what do you mean by potency like what is potency for looking at just that word mm, yeah it's like um well there's a i wonder if i can remember it there's a saying about women are like tea bags you can tell their potency when you put them in hot water so it's like it's your strength when you're willing to show up <laughs> Mm. Um, and like what if we didn't need to be in hot water or a tricky situation to to have our potency be in the world oh I love that so kind of like the grandma lifting the car right <laughs> off exactly. of her baby grandson it's like it was needed but what if she was always being willing to be that powerful and that right. um, wow and it doesn't mean like that you have to do these defying feats but being expanded in the world in the face of other people being contracted can be a potency also mm -hmm. so kind of like so the invitation like anything, yeah and so anything that we've made a wrongness is a strongness in actuality so um, turning it on its head um, there's there's just so much judgment about beauty that there's got to be some potency in there you know otherwise there wouldn't be anything wrong with it mm. right and how do we start how do we start to use it to our advantage like instead of using it as a flogging tool or something to beat ourselves about right. up about right well, do you do clearings on the show here? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's kind of anything goes, but mo everybody here knows that yeah, we're access consciousness. I um, interview access consciousness certified facilitators. So, yep. If you awesome. have any clearings or anything so, you'd like to offer, you can. <laughs> yeah, it seems like um, we could do what does beauty mean to you? Mm -hmm. And everything that is, will you destroy and then create it? Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and the odds. There's, there's a lot of energy on that. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, and it's funny because I just, I just realized I was like, there's actually that I am beauty movement um, that some of our friends were, have been doing on Facebook, right? The 30 mm -hmm. days. And um, did you do that? I imagine you did. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I went to the first two and a half day class and it was amazing. Oh, awesome. Because um, when you like when you start clearing out those places that are the most heavily judged, you know, mm. it's like sex and money and beauty and, you know, things like that, you start to gain so much more of the being that you are. And so you bring that to everything that you do. So it just gives you more potency mm. by not cutting off or holding back or trying to hide. It's funny when people try to hide their beauty. I mean, like take you for instance, you're this grand person and you have this amazing grand name. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried to hide? <laughs> well, I've tried. It have, I can't say I've been any successful. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, okay. Hiding isn't working. So what if I actually embraced it and stepped into and and acknowledge what you are being in the world, so that mm. you can see it more and be it more. Mm. And everything that doesn't allow that pop and pot. <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pot, all that, shorts, boys, and beyond. So, awesome. So, I I know that, um, and I'm no I'm no exception. I I know that, you know, um, I even sent out a newsletter, you know, to promote the show and talk a little bit about like all the places where, like, I always believed I was innately wrong, like. And I could find anything, anything about me that there was something wrong, right? Um, but I also know, and I've heard this quite commonly, like a lot of people talking about like that they were always told when they were young not to be too much, not to be, you know, too big, not to be too successful, not to be too, too anything. And, and I know that that's a lie and... Um, could we maybe do a clearing on like clearing out all those places where it, it it's um, yeah, like normal? Yeah, turning it on instead of turning yeah. it up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I want to share a little story. Sure, please. About yeah. I, I think I was in high school and I was taking public transportation somewhere. And um, I mean, in high school, I, I was just me. And I was, I was pretty, I was a pretty quiet person. Um, didn't wear makeup, had a average body build and all of that. And I was on public transportation and this guy started talking to me and calling me by this other name. And I'm like, I'm not that person. You know, leave me alone, I'm not that person. And he just, he wouldn't stop. And he got off at my stop and started following me home. So I went to a friend's house instead. Um, and I, it kind of scared me, like, what's going on? And when I went home to tell my mom, she's like, you need to make yourself uglier so that people aren't attracted to you. We could get you some glasses that, you know, don't have a prescription. So <laughs> and I thought, that is so bizarre. Like, why would I want to do that? <laughs> like, it just... It was sort of a beyond for me, and and I didn't do that. Uh, I didn't think I was particularly uh, beautiful, but whatever. Somehow I just kept attracting people, 
and uh, and rather rather than contract it, I. I don't know, I guess I was just being more energy and I was being more of the killing energy. Like, don't touch me, stay away from me kind of energy or I'll kill mm. you, you know? <laughs> and that that seemed to work. And I guess coming from Boston, a lot of people have that energy anyway. <laughs> so it was easy for me to learn and to duplicate. So I would say for for anybody who's, shrinking away from any of their capacities like that doesn't give you more access to you actually expanding and turning it up does mm -hmm. so what if we all turned everything we were up and expanded more and had more of our potency available to handle whatever situation we're in everything that doesn't allow that we destroy and then create it yes Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pop, all nine shorts, boys and yeah. So Awesome. Thank you for that. And you said something in the beginning of the call that I wanted to touch on because um, I know, I know for, for us we have we have a little bit more exposure to choice, <laughs> like just choose something different. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I also know that there's some people out there that are just like, well, what does that mean exactly? Like. How would I, what's an example of like how I could choose something different when mm -hmm. maybe I'm getting like, like you, you, you made a choice there and you said, <coughs> excuse me, um, that you're going to, uh, just be that kill energy so that it kept, you know, unwanted attention away from you. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. It's, uh. Huh. I guess it's like being in the question of what you would choose for your life, what you'd rather have than what's showing up. And when I was a kid growing up, we moved a lot. We moved every few years, I guess. And I remember every time we moved, I would think to myself, okay, um, how can I be different so that I can maybe have more friends or, or just create something different in my life because I, mm. I never really had this huge circle of friends. And so I decide, okay, I'm going to be more outgoing. And I would just do it. Hmm. Back then, I didn't know Pock and Pod. <laughs> right? <laughs> so for me, I just was like, okay, I would like a different result. So what can I do different? What can I be different for that to show up? And I would just mm. do it. So that's really what choice is. If there's, if there's um, a bump in the road or a hole, you can go around it. You can stop at it. You can jump over it. Like you have so many choices in life. But if you keep falling in or if you keep tripping, you're not making a different choice. So you can mm. just ask what different choice can I make? And that would be choosing different rather than pocking and potting the bump in the road. Right. Just choose a different direction. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you, Julie. We're going to actually take a short break here. Um, so, and we will come back right after the break. If anyone out there has any questions about the potency of beauty, please call us 202-570-7057. of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. 
Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. What is magnificent about you that you've never acknowledged? Are you ready to let your own light shine? What if you were 1,000 times more potent and powerful than you give yourself credit for? What if there was a monthly call that is designed specifically to empower you to be all you can be? Would that be fun for you? Venus Castleberg is now offering a Magnificence monthly membership for only $50 a month. Mention this ad and receive 50% off. To register or for more information about the membership, events, and services, please go to www.venuscastleberg.com. Is now the time to be different? This is the story of a very special woman. Just a few knew about her superpowers. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her Mom. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources at aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Yeah, totally. How does it get better? We're coming back. Yeah. Cool. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> um, I am here with Julie Tootin, and um, we are talking about the potency of beauty. And right before... We were talking about like, you know, tapping into this, the potency and, and I wanted to dive in and go, okay, so if we were to like tell somebody out there, maybe somebody who's, you know, never really potency is energy. So, um, what are some ways that somebody might be able to tap into their own potency more? Um, well, you can look at it like a um, like a faucet, you know, when it's off mm -hmm. or when it's dripping, that's just a tiny little trickle that comes out. And that's how I perceive a lot of people being in the world. They're just, they're letting a tiny trickle of their being be. Mm -hmm. But when you start to use the tools and you start to embrace the being that you are, and the things that you love to do and allow joy to be in your life and allow others to perceive it if they choose, then you're like opening that tap and you can open it to like a rush of water. And that to me would be more of the potency of you. Um, and it doesn't mean like to be this fire hose and blast people out of the way. <laughs> it's more like, if you're going to be that potent, awesome, but aim it up and let it sprinkle down on a really big space of people. So broadband it, mm. don't laser beam it. And that will help you be your strength and potency without having to turn yourself down um, and also not blast people out of your space. <laughs> That's a great recommendation. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah this is broadband. I love that. Yes. And, and I can totally see it. Like you're more like a mister instead of a, you know, a hot fire hose. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and interestingly enough, I love those misters when, you know, they get a facial and like, <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's like, you know, a lot of times people aren't even aware of their potency, especially when they're first starting to use it. Um, so, you know, you can, you can get cues by the way people react to you 
And, um, <laughs> it's just easier to, I guess, ask to broadband, you know, from the beginning of your day, you know, mm. expand out and, and be everything that you be, but just broadband it and move through your day like that. Beautiful. There's so much space in that. Like to, yeah. <laughs> and like when I do my expanding exercises or um, energy pulls, I like to do that and I like to like sprinkle diamonds or gold sprinkles all over. So like you can use your energy that you be and your potency to sprinkle all of that throughout your reality and amazing things start showing up. <laughs> Like beautiful jewels. <laughs> like beautiful jewels, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So um, what what are maybe some ways that, um, so I know for me, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm a nature girl. I love nature and um, like trees, you name it, trees, plants, flowers, mountains. I mean, everything about nature, everything about the earth is beautiful to me. Um, mm -hmm. And you were saying in the beginning, you were talking about like, okay, so if we're, we're, we can see the beauty outside of ourselves, how do we see the beauty within ourselves more? Mm -hmm. what, what could you say to that? Yeah, it, it, nature is a great way to look at that. And um, What's popping right now is that session that Dane did on the beach in Langkawi mm. about how people go to Langkawi and they see the beauty of the ocean and stuff and they just look at it and project this superficial thing about the beauty and they're not actually receiving the energy of the being of the earth. And so mm -hmm. it was sort of dying and, the, and there weren't so many fish in the ocean and it was just a superficial um, acknowledgement, I guess. And by, by starting to acknowledge the being, the beautiful being of the earth and the kindness that it is, it invited it to spring forth again and that changed the ocean and there were, you know, fish and seals and things in the ocean and it seemed to like change overnight. So like when we're looking at something, if we can, if we can just get into the curiosity of the being that creates the external beauty especially in nature, it's really easy to see that because, you know, a tree is not putting on makeup, but <laughs> it's expressing every leaf with like the most expansive stretching, reaching, uh, blooming possibility that it has every mm. day. And I love to walk in the redwoods here and just feel the way they connect and reach all the way up into the sky and it just makes me stand taller and, and be this energy of expanding in all directions. Mm. Even though it's beautiful to the eye, it's beautiful to your being as well. All right. So kind of like the invitation you were to me to like sit up a little taller and <laughs> be me a little bit more. It's like, oh, okay. That's Somebody so else cool. is being me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, be, you're being beauty. <laughs> it's wow. such an invitation too. And I think, and, and I think that that's what, you're very welcome. I think that that's what some people forget is like, we think that somehow, like we've been judged as beauty is wrong, or, or maybe some things happened when we were younger that, you know, had us think that our beauty was, you know, um, a problem um, mm -hmm. versus, 
really seeing it as a gift and a capacity and, and, and an invitation to others. Um, so I wonder how, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Well, like if you take it out of the right look and the mm-hmm. right clothes and the right whatever or the wrong look and, you know, you take it out of right and right. wrong beauty is an energy it's an aesthetic it's a being and when you take it out of the right and wrong and you look at okay what beauty do i be there can like one of our friends nancy o'connor she saw beauty in like disaster and chaos and nuclear waste Mm. you know (laughs) there's a potency there (laughs) So it's not right. like Vogue magazine beauty, but right. what she photographed went in museum. So, right. you know, it's like, what is beauty to you? And what beauty do you be that if you acknowledged it would allow you to be it even more in the world? Hmm. And it's funny how like I just I never really thought about beauty and myself. I just liked pretty things and I kind of you know, I like princessy stuff, you know. <laughs> and um, I would just create beauty. And so for the longest time people would say, "Well, you you create beauty in the world." And I always had it like, "Yeah, what I make with my hands or if I paint something or I take some old chair that's being thrown out and I fix it up and I paint it and I glue sparkly things on it like that's creating beauty but I never included myself in it until the I am beauty movement started and Mm -hmm. I was like oh that and I realized that we're all included in beauty if we allow ourselves to step into it and to be it right and each person has their own unique flavor of beauty right there's no like you said there's no right or wrong there's no right size there's no wrong size there's you know it's we're not talking about like there's this picture of perfect and trying to make everybody be that perfect person but rather be you (laughs) and yeah, whatever bring whatever beauty you have <laughs> right right exactly the trees don't judge the trees are the trees and they invite you to drop your judgments of yourself because they don't judge themselves mm. or compare to themselves to others yeah right yeah which i think is maybe a misconception too of beauty is this like somehow I need to look like you or be like you or that's not what we're saying here at all. We're saying, no, we want the individuality of everybody that they can bring to the world by being their own beautiful selves. However, that is, um, is such a gift. And if you didn't put a lid on it or make Mm -hmm. it wrong, I wonder how it would show up in the world. And, I wonder how, too, you could use it to your advantage. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That is so it. it, (laughs) And anything that doesn't allow everybody to use it to their advantage. Did you destroy an uncreated times of God's land? Yeah. I run good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. It's awesome. So it's funny you went into like that you love beautiful things because that was I actually noted that because that's something I know about you. You you are a lover of beauty, um, and you even make beautiful jewelry. Um, and what would you say beauty gifts us, or maybe is trying to gift us, but we're not willing to receive? Well, like if I put it into the context of the jewelry that I make, mm-hmm. I, I create things with the underlying ask of what's going to draw out the person's being. 
more. Mm. So when they put on a necklace or earrings, um, it, they like their being shines through. It just it's sort of like a before and after of a bars session or SOP or something. It's it's quite incredible. And the pieces also, I ask them to choose their person. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because people will come into my shop and they'll look around and usually the very first thing that they're drawn to uh, they like and they want and then they think well I should look around some more because that was too easy <laughs> but they always end up <laughs> right? that one thing and th- when they put that on and their being like expands and their face changes and they stand up taller and they see themselves in this completely different way. It's almost like peeling the judgment off and they get to see this pure beauty being beaming through. Um, like, how can you not choose that? Well, a lot of people do. They, they walk out without getting anything, which is a whole different story. But um, the people that are willing to honor themselves with something like that, it's like every time they put it on, they be more. They step into more potency. So oh, I that's beautiful. That with, I share that with customers, and sometimes they come back and give me feedback saying, you know what, you're absolutely right. I wore these every day at work for a week, and I had more clients. I had more success. My husband noticed me more. You know, things like that show up for people when mm-hmm. they're being more. And sometimes it is something as simple as um, a, a pretty dress or, you know, some nice jewelry or something that actually, it's almost an honoring of us and the willingness to be beautiful instead of, like you were talking about that in the beginning too, where you said, you know, the incongruency sometimes is like, you know, you're really beautiful on the inside, but then there's not really a taking care of, you know, you live in sweatpants or, you know, whatever. I mean, there's no judgment here, but it's just like, what is the incongruency for yourself? And how can you change that and choose something different by simply changing maybe the way that you treat yourself? Do you treat yourself with regard? Do you, um, do you honor your body? Do you take care of your body? Do you you know, treat yourself to facials or whatever it is that makes you feel nurtured and and pampered and and feel beautiful, even like. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I know and the bodies love like, to be touched. <laughs> many cool. years ago, bef- right before I actually found the access tools, I um, I felt old. I was 39. I felt like, oh my God, I'm going to be over the hill soon. I felt old. I felt unattractive. I had low energy. And um, I was like, okay, what else is possible? Like, there's got to be something else. (laughs) (laughs) And I found the access tools shortly after that and, and started to change the tape that was going on in my head. And I started to actually, like, because I wanted to, I guess, feel beautiful and not old and unattractive and married and, you know, all the things that go with that, I just started (laughs) saying to myself, you are beautiful. Mm. You know, you are beautiful. And, And when I started doing that, I would go into the grocery store and like the guy behind the fish counter would go, oh my God, you're so beautiful. And I was like, what? (laughs) So the more, the more you shed your judgments of yourself, the more other people will um, acknowledge you for what you're being. Mm. So how can you do that? I like to stop judging yourself. Right. Okay. We're going to take another short break here and talk more about that on the other side for sure. If you have any questions for Julie, please feel free to call 202-570-7057.
the best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. Who said life had to be hard and disempower you? What if all of life really could come to you with ease and joy? What if everything you saw as a wrongness of you was actually one of your greatest strengths? What if you could wake up every morning with a newfound sense of empowerment? Join Venus Castleberg to discover a world of infinite possibilities. Every weekday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, Morning Musings goes live on the Venus Castleberg CF Facebook page. What magic can we create every day? Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Welcome back. We are here with Julie Tootin talking about the potency of beauty. And uh, Julie, right before the break, you talked about getting out of judgment of you, which ultimately is probably the biggest key <laughs> to tapping into your your potency and your beauty. Um, how would you say one? And I loved what you said. I loved how you were like, I just changed the tape, you know, and I kept telling myself, you are beautiful seeing it differently um and you know i'm i'm sure there's somebody out there right now going what you know what would you that that's nice for you um but that you haven't seen you haven't seen what <laughs> i look like <laughs> nobody said it was easy but you can have ease with it <laughs> if you use the tool um, I think like the first step is becoming aware of what's going on in your head mm. and mm. remembering that 98% of that isn't even yours to begin with. So I used to drop my kids off at school and um, you know the way I am, I put on lipstick and you know a little bit of makeup and I wear something kind of cute jeans and a cute top and I put myself together because that's just what I like to do and I would drop my kids at school and all the other moms would be sweatpants and their hair was a mess and they they seemed so overwhelmed by being a mom and I mm. wasn't and I'd walk up to them and I could feel all the judgment of me and that my hair was straight and combed and um, I had to, I had to really be diligent about not buying into the judgments, not making them wrong for their choices, but also not making myself wrong for my choice to put myself together. Right. So like becoming aware of what's going on in your head is the first step and then going, okay. Is this even mine? And if it's not, return to sender. And then if it is mine, okay, I'm not really enjoying the outcome of 
this conversation in my head. So stopping it and looking at where I would like to go, what I would like to create. So really paying attention to what you're thinking, what you're saying, and what you'd actually like to be in the world. And for me, for some reason, I came in wanting to be an inspiration, wanting to create beauty, wanting to make people happy. I have no idea why, but that's just what I've always wanted. And I remember having conversations with my aunt when I was a little kid. I was like nine and doing meditation and she taught me Reiki and I just like I was telling her I want to create images and things that will make people choose to be happy mm. like why why be sad and suffer I just didn't get it So, but it's not always been easy, I have to say that, and I fell into the, the pool of sadness and suffering with everybody else for a long time. Um, but I always had that, you know, that beacon of awareness of what it is I wanted to create, and somehow I navigated through my life with my eyes there so even if I got into the deep end of not being happy I still knew that there was something else possible so I wonder how many of the people listening know that there's something else possible might not know how to get there but they, they, they know it is possible they probably wouldn't be listening if they didn't know that Right. right. My lovely little secret out there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> like, just keep going. <laughs> just keep right. going and use every freaking tool, trick, magic, whatever that you can pull out until, <laughs> until you get closer and closer. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And would you be willing to share a little bit about of your story about, you know, how did you get yourself out of the deep end and the dark um, energy? And Well, I, um, I was a seeker like many other people who find access. And I did, um, I did meditation from when I was a little kid. And then Later on when I got married, um, I, I think we did like 20 years of this specific meditation and self-realization fellowship, Paramahansa mm -hmm. Yogananda. We were really into it and um, followed the lessons, but it, it felt like it only took you so far. And the mm -hmm. lessons that they taught were in three-year segments and then when you got to the end of them you'd repeat it again and after I repeated it about four times I was like okay what else is there <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting happier <laughs> and um, while while that was going on I had my business and I was making jewelry and I got a kink in my neck and I went to my chiropractor who always did weird stuff and he he had also done the self-realization fellowship meditation um, and he had found access so when I went to him and he asked me what's a pain in the neck to you and I was like oh and all this energy came up and he asked would I destroy and uncreate it and said the clearing statement and my neck freed up and I was like, what the heck was that? I'd like that. So I took the classes. Back then there was no bars class. It was just foundation. Um, and I met Gary and Dane. They did intros back then. <laughs> they did two <laughs> intro nights back to back for like $50, okay? <laughs> this is like 2003, 2004. Um, and uh, I just like I just chose things that brought me more lightness 
and access mm. did that. And I would say that, you know, after a few years, I, I, uh, I was a little bit under divorce attack, attack from my ex. Um, and I kind of hid the tools and, and it really made things difficult again. And I've been recultivating the magic and the possibilities and it's just growing so much faster. So it's like, it doesn't matter if you start it and you stop it or you start it and you judge yourself. Like you just start again every day, every moment. Okay, now what would I like? What am I really here for? Mm. So I just say, don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. Keep going. Definitely. Definitely don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. And and how... Um, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and let's say, you know, we're talking again a little bit more about the judgment. You know, like getting out of judgment... Um, how does one get out of judgment of themselves and see more of their own beauty, tap into the more of their potency? Um, what are maybe some tricks and tools that you use for that? Hmm. Yeah, it, it's something that I'm, I am still working on. Like I would by no means say that I'm beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that's really great is running bars, and I run mm. bars every single week. I've hosted a bars trade on Wednesday nights for the past 15 years, and I also get my bars run in between that if I can. Um, but another thing that's really opened up a lot for me was doing SOP sessions on myself. Mm. There, with with doing that, and I think I started doing that, I don't know, a year or two ago. I don't do very long, I do a few minutes, but just perceiving the energy that I can be for other people and actually gifting it to me, it's huge. Like I never realized what it was until I allowed myself to gift it to me. So, like, what would it be like if each one of you gifted the energy of you to you, mm. the way you care for other people, care for you? It's very powerful. I it's just had an awareness. And push your barriers yeah. down and receive. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Mm. Yeah, totally. Like I just I just dawned on me. I'm like, what if you are beautiful for you, not for anyone else? Like mm -hmm. what if like and I, and I, I, I can take it I can take it a little bit more like, you know, physically, but what if what if the physical beauty that you have, whatever it is that you can acknowledge, and maybe your eyes, you like your eyes or your smile or you know, there's something about you that you like, but what if that Part, that piece isn't for anybody else it was actually meant for you but we've tried to like project like somehow this beauty whatever it is that that I'm tapping into maybe it's more for other people no the beauty that we're tapping into is for you and you can then be the invitation to something greater for other people, but not because you're, throw, you know, throwing it up on them or forcing it on them or pushing them, um, that you're yeah. just being that. Um, yeah, it's like um, you're holding all your molecules together in the way they're held together anyway. So <laughs> if we just acknowledge that this is the way we like it to be. <laughs> And embraced that it's it's yeah. just so refreshing to be around somebody who's not judging themselves mm. right especially about the way they look or the way they be mm -hmm. so yeah and such a more of that today 
Yes. <laughs> and I love what you said about, you know, like, just change the tape, you know? So if everybody out there could just, just take one thing that's going on in your, that go, that's the negative self-talk in any way, you know, that, that tells you something, um, is not right about you and mm -hmm. can you just change the tape what would you change the tape to you know um and everybody can Sometimes do that for themselves the jolt. <laughs> right. i remember being at a seven day and and stood up to ask a question and gary said to me in front of like a hundred people he's like you are so ugly and i was like what? <laughs> what does he mean? What? Is, what? Right. And he said, the shit that goes on in your head, you are just so mm. ugly to yourself. Mm. Okay, changing that. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's where you, it's just choice. It's choosing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, that doesn't work for me. I'm choosing something different. I remember for me myself once I went went through I got into a relationship and like we tended to we started to dress down, you know, where you like start to wear sweatpants all the time. You start to wear, and I just I like looked at him one day and I went, I, you can do whatever you want to do. That doesn't work for me. I can't I can't dress down. I, I feel awful. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, Julie. I like to like make sure my hair is brushed and you know that I'm. But I don't have to be like, you know, I'm not like dressed to the nines. But I'm also like, I love wearing dresses, even if they're just summer dresses. You know, and things that are I can work out in and run in, and yeah, I could do all sorts of things in. So. Um, but it's finding that for you. It's finding whatever your beauty expression is for you. So thank you so much for you, Julie. How can people find you? <laughs> I have a website, julietootenenergy.com. And I also have a Facebook group I invite you all to join. It's free. It's called Expand Space to Unwind. And I do a weekly expanding exercise there on Facebook Live. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here. It was such a joy. Um, and everybody out there, you are beautiful. Go be you.